There's the navigation for uh, favorite books. Okay, so uh, today again we will follow. Um, uh, where was I at? Josh, Joshua Tree. Okay, so this is where I left off. Uh, again, I'm just going to have some basic button right now. Uh, I'm going to give it a background color. Um, if I can find color down here. So I'm just going to make a basic button. And the first one will go to map, right? I think that's the order I have it. Do I have it map on the, on the handout? Map, web link, and slideshow. So I got map. I'm going to duplicate that if you remember how to duplicate the option key on the keyboard. So you can duplicate a button. So again, this is just a plain button. How do you make a button? You go up here to the here. You type in button. Remember up here? Type in button. Drag a button out. It's just a plain button. Then I'm going to duplicate this button by holding the option key down and clicking and dragging. You can duplicate a button by option, click, and drag. Option, click, and drag. And then the second one is going to be what? Web link. And option, click, and drag. No. There we go. Option, click, and drag. And what was the third one? Slideshow. And then option, click and drag. And we're going to do camping. And then we're going to do activities too, right? Okay, it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's what I have so far. I have four buttons. So if you, if you remember, to make a second screen, you use a view controller. Right, a view controller. So I have three buttons. Oh, let's first uh, uh, add some um, alignment to these. Let's align these together. In fact, I probably should have aligned one before I duplicated it, but whatever. Uh, let's group them. How about that? Into a stack. And then... Uh, Let's uh, uh, give that stack uh, some some constraints. I'm going to give this stack. So I group the buttons together into a stack. And then let's give it some constraints. Uh, the constraints I'll give it here will be, uh, let's put uh, 0, 0, uh, 20 is fine there, and uh, 60 is fine. That's fine and they go across the screen. So again, how I got the buttons to go all the way across the screen was putting 0, 0, uh, 20 down so it's not up against that. Again, and then the bottom I'm not worried about right now. So again, I have one button goes all the way across the screen. How does it go all the way across the screen after I grouped it into a stack? Here you can see the stack right there is by uh, putting 0, 0 on the stack. Again, I'm going to make a second view. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Zoom out by using the minus, 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 plus. And um, I'm going to make a second view controller for the map. To do that, I'm going to hit this button right here. And I'm going to type in. So hit this. Type in view controller. I'm going to drag that in. Drag that in. So we have a second view controller. You can copy the artwork from the other one if you would like the top part here. If you select it all, um, you can actually copy this entire st oh the back button there. You can actually copy this entire stack right here. See the top this top part right here is our stack right here with our logo and stuff right. You know I have a I have the text and a logo and this. You can actually duplicate that into your other one. Um, I believe option does it, option, and I'm going to put it right down here. Again, you can duplicate 
objects from one to the other. By so I grabbed the stack, which was the the text, right? The text, the the symbol, and the back button. You know, we use the back button to go back. I duplicated that by choosing the stack right there, right? And hold down the option key and I drag down to it. See, this is the view controller here. Do you see it? I duplicated it. And then you can put it. Yeah, I'm sure you can copy and paste, right? Um, one thing it didn't bring, though, was the constraints, did it? You would have to. These constraints are for everything, though. Um, well, we can give it new constraints if we want. And again, you can give it a different color background if you want. I'm going to give it a different color background if you want. Since this is going to be a map, right? Maybe we'll do a different color so we can see. How about we do a, a blue or something? How about we give it a different color for the background? And then for that stack, I might just... You know what, an easy way to go about, um, an easy way to, to um, put constraints on without having to think about it is to use the suggested constraints. If you've never used this as a suggested constraint, you might want to try it. Where's the suggested constraints? Well, it's down here in this little triangle. See the triangle with the arrows on both sides right here? If you click on that, there's one that says reset to con suggested constraints. Do you see that? If you click on that, it'll actually put some constraints in there. Hey, I don't have to deal with thinking about it. Right? Then you don't have to think about it. Okay, so again, an easy way to put constraints on so you don't have to think about the size, the alignment, or any of that stuff. Is right here, there was the, the little, little triangle right here. Click on it and say, reset to suggested constraints. It'll put constraints on there. You don't have to think about it size, anything. It knows it's in a it's in a group, right? So it's gonna put it pretty good. It'll make it like the other one. Does that make sense? <coughs> Anybody have any questions about that? I duplicated the top part. Suggested constraints, uh huh, right there. Uh -huh. And it just put some constraints. I don't know. I see how long it looks like it looks like it's like this. Okay, I don't know. That's what I do. Kind of puts it wherever you want. Okay, so the next step is we're going to follow the map. We're going to put a map in here. Um, to put the map in, uh, the first thing is you need to put the map kit in there, right? We've already turned it on. Remember, we turned on the map kit at the beginning. Um, so we have to make a, a its own Coco Touch class, right? So remember how to do that. So let's try that. So we need to make an, its own Coco Touch class for this view controller. To do that. To make the programming for this window, to make the programming for this window, I'm going to go, hold on, let me go back to the first one here. I'm going to make my own programming for this by going underneath the File, New, File, File, New File. And inside there, I'm going to do the Coco Touch class, Coco Touch. So this is the programming for that one view that we just made. Okay, Coco Touch class right here. Say next. Um, it's not a table view. Don't do table view. Uh, we're doing a, um, a, a view controller, a UI view controller. It put table view because that's what we were doing last time. But remember, this is just a plain view controller, right? It's a plain view. So we're going to do a UI view controller, okay, and make sure it says Swift. You can give it a name up here. This is going to be, how about we call it map, map view controller, map view controller, map view controller. 
and then say next. It's going to ask you where to save it. You can leave it in the same folder with the other Swift files. See the other same folder with the other Swift files? Same folder. And then it should be here. Again, it's called Map View Controller. So here's how you make sure that it's attached to that storyboard. So we need to make sure that this Map View Controller, this new Swift file that we just made, is attached to, to this. You need to select the view, this view that we just made, this second view. And you need to go over here to the, uh, see the little folder right here, the one that's called, um, what is this one called? Um, I, I don't, th this window has a name, I can't remember. Identity Inspector, see that right here, this one, the one with the squares? Identity Inspector, and then right here with the pull-down menu, see the pull-down menu? And it should be in there, no? Anybody else? It should have been in there, no? Maybe I'm not selecting this right. Double click on it. Make it blue. Now, you got to double click on it and make it blue. And it should be in here. No. Did you see yours in there? Oh, you saw it in mine? Oh, here it is. Map view controller. There it is. <laughs> there you go. You might have to make it blue. Did you see I had to, I had to click on it twice? You got to make it kind of blue. See how it's blue? then it should show up up there. So make sure you choose your the one you made. See, now we're ready to program because we have attached the programming to that view. So let's follow the handout. It, it seemed to work, so let's try it. To get the programming up next to it, to get the programming up next to it, remember the Olympics up here, the Olympic symbol with the two symbols here, right here? Click on that. And it should show map view controller. How do you know you're in the right one? Because it says map view controller here. It should say map view controller here. Do you see it? All right. Let's add the map resources. If you look in the handout there, you'll notice it says import map kit. Do you see that in the top of the programming in the handout? So you have the UI kit. I'm going to hit return. I'm going to say import map kit k-i-t do you see that in the handout the second line number 10 there number 10 import map kit so we have the resources for the map do you see that okay next thing we need to do is we need to make an outlet for the map right we need to make a map window a window for the map to make a window for the map we're going to come over here to the to the objects here. See the objects in the library? And there is one for a map MAP. You should have map kit view. So again, up here where the object is right here, see the object? There should be one for map kit view right here. Do you see that? You're going to take that map kit view and you're going to drag it out and then you have to give it some constraints. So make it a certain size that you think the map should be. And then if you want, you can do, do what I did last time. Reset to suggested constraints if you want. That actually turns out, reset to suggested constraints. It kind of tends to work. I'm just going to use the default. Reset to suggested constraints. So again, I made the map, the window, the size that I wanted, right? See it here. I, I kind of, again, you find the map in the object, drag it out, stretch it to what you think it should be, and then I just use the default reset to constructed constraints. So I'm not going to sit there and try and think about window size or any of that stuff. It should work. That, I, I, I've been using that the past couple days and um, it seemed to work. Okay? So we have the window there. Now you need to make the outlet, right? How do you make the outlet? You control drag to the programming. Control drag to the programming. So again, if you don't see your window, your programming window up, you should be able to see it. If you don't see it, again, it's under here. You can see the Olympic thing, the show assistant editor here. So you'll notice they have the outlet above the view control, under the view controller. So again, I'm going to take this window that I just made. I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to click and drag under here and make an outlet. And at least in the example, they called it map view map view so I'm gonna call it map 
View, capital V I E W. So in the handout, you'll notice you can see where it's named right there. It's the, it's the fourth word in the line there. See the fourth word in the line? Map view. That's what you're going to put there. And it's going to be an outlet, right? Because we're putting something in there. What are we putting in there? We're putting in the coordinates for a map, right? Everybody see how to name that. And if you connect, it should look like it does. There. I'll pause for a minute. Again, the easiest way to find the longitude and latitude for your specific location is to go to Google Maps. Go to Google Maps. And Maps is up here in this little, this thing up here. Maps, Google Maps. Type in the location of where you want to be, where you want to program your map. Uh, I'm going to put in Joshua Tree National Park. And then I think it's the happy guy in the corner here. See the little happy guy right here? Oh, no, that's the happy guy. I know there's a, there's a button you click on. Hold on. It's here somewhere, maybe here. There was like a. I thought it was this. Was it this? No. There used to be an icon. Oh, it's this one, maybe. There it is. Get current location. Learn more. Oh, shit. No. Can you just click on the map? Click on the map? Oh, it gave me 3D. I didn't want this. Uh oh. Just click on the map. Oh, there it is. I see it right there. There it is. Write it down. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. Unless you can copy it. Anybody be able to copy that? 33.96. 0581. And then negative 115.7. 38085. Okay. Sorry, how did you get that? What's that? I'm sorry. How did you get the I clicked on the, this guy right here, uh -huh. the street view, and then I clicked on the screen. Mm -hmm. This guy, and then I clicked on the screen. Oh, I don't know how. Oh, I don't know why it's not showing up. No, hold on. How did I get that? No. I had it. Oh, get current location? No. How did I do that? What's this? Oh, jeez. I don't know how I did that. Oh. I went there, and then I went back. Oh, there it is. I got it again. I don't know. I, I just clicked multiple things. I like clicked twice. They say maybe a right click. So, yeah, I'm not important. They say what's here? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so you found it. I don't know. You got it. I think you click twice. Did you find four times? Right click and it says yeah. an option what's here. Right click, find the option what's here. Did you find some? Okay. I don't know. You need longitude and latitude. Okay. I found mine. Okay. I don't know. That seemed to be the easiest way to find what you want. Okay. So I got my location. So again, under the super view did load, we're going to make a constant for the, for the location, which is your location. So we're going to do let initial location, which is a made up word, of course, equal 
CL location. And then we have what? Oh, here we got an example. We have um, latitude. And then put in your latitude. Then put a comma and longitude. Okay. Then again, the next line is for center map on location. But is it, it doesn't like this. So then we have center map on location. Yeah, it doesn't like. It doesn't like that we're using. Maybe because. It doesn't like uh, that center on ma center map on location. It doesn't have a value, or doesn't know what it is. I think it needs to be on the same line. No, that's why. Should it be uh, left? What's that? Oh. Yeah, it doesn't like that. I think this is all on the same line now. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. We got to tell it at the bottom. Okay, we'll get there. Let's Let's just leave it like it is. So let's jump down below here, outside of the view did load. Uh, and then they have let, I think the let rate regional radius, the CL location distance equals 50,000. Do you see that? I think that's the zoom factor, I think. That's how, how zoomed in you are. So you can adjust that to be zoomed in further or out more. Do you see that one where it says let region radius? Do you see that? I think that's the zoom factor. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I, 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 I remember adjusting it though. I do remember adjusting it. I just don't know what the units are. I think that's pretty zoomed out because I think uh, in the one example, uh, uh, that the Iceland example, she had the entire island on there, right? Right? Then, yeah, that might be like meters, yeah. so 500 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably meters. You're right. But for a national park, it's like 
Probably 500. How about that? I'm going to go down to 500. Okay, let's do the function. And of course, we're using the center map location, this one. Then we're making another constant, which is the coordinate region. Is there a make with distance in here? I don't see it. Location. Dot coordinates, coordinate, coordinate, comma, region radius. So region radius. Why do they have two region uh, two region radiuses? I don't know. I they've changed it probably. Okay, and then the last is the map view dot set region coordinate region animated true. And the animated two means you could zoom in and zoom out, I believe. That that way it's not fixed, right? If you want it to be fixed, I guess you could set the animated region to false. Still doesn't like center on map location. I just use the fix. I don't know, we could try it. Then the last thing we need to do is make sure we get we get to go from 
the button to this window, right? We need to be able to click the map button and go to this window. Uh, to do that, we could just use the control drag. And then the back button, we need to make an outlet over here that, remember the exit? They go back to here, right? Do you remember doing that with the color one, right? Again, this goes to here, and then the back button needs to go to the exit back to here, right? Okay, so you need to make an outlet over here. Do you remember it was red something in the in the example? Remember this example? I'll show you. So for the navigation to go from one to the other, uh, we're going to use the. I'm going to use the same color. Where was it? The color example. That was under here. Um, segways and controllers. Here it is. Remember, you need to do the unwind to red. Remember this right here. Remember doing this? So we need to add this to this this one over here to this view controller, right? To this view controller. So I'm going to click on this one, this view controller here. And up here, we're going to make an outlet. Now, it's going to give you an error message because it doesn't know what the outlet is. But if you remember when we did this up here, Um, just below the view did load. And we made an outlet with the at sign IB action. function. Now they use the word unwind to red as the name of it, but we could call it anyways. We could say back to main menu. Then it's a, a unwind segue with a colon and then a UI story storyboard segue like that and now it's giving me error message but it's supposed to give you an error message right did I spell anything wrong oh I have to give a have to give it this. Okay. Don't worry about this because we haven't used it yet. Okay, so for the navigation, again, I put this in the, I put this right here, back to main menu, back to main menu, unwind segue, UI storyboard segue, IB action. This goes back to whatever the last storyboard was, right? Do you remember doing this? Example in class, right? This example with the with the green. Remember, green, red, blue. Right? Oh, but it had a navigation and controller, didn't it? Oh, look at that. Oh, we might need. Oh, that had the back button. Oh, I don't know. Let's see if we can make it happen. I don't know. Why did it show a navigational controller? Yeah, we had this, we go here, and then this, right? And that dismiss goes back, right? Remember the dismiss goes here, look, goes there. Okay, let's just try it. Okay, so again, for the map button right here, I'm going to select the map button. I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to drag to this window. I'm going to hold the control key down, drag to this window, right? And I'm going to say show. 
right? And then for this one, I'm going to select the back button, hold the control key down, and no, nope, it didn't work. Why didn't that work? Again, control drag the dismiss button to the exit object at the top of the view control. When you release the mouse or trackpad, the popover will appear, listing all the unwind, unwind to red with segue, which matches the method signature you placed in the definition control. Why is it unwind to red with unwind segue? What did I do wrong? Unwind to wed, unwind. Mm -hmm. Create a short sequence moment. Unwind. Return to red, yellow, and present to enable user to go back to the previous view controller. You need to create something called an unwind segue. While a segue transition to another scene is unwind segue transition from the current scene to a return to the previous display screen. To begin, select the view controller switch on the project file and add the following line just below the code that deals with segues, typically near the end of the view. Maybe I think we have to add it to the end below. Hold on, let me go back to here. Uh, I think this needs to go. This needs to go below. Does it go down here? Is that how we got it to work? Let me try that again. There you go. Yeah, I had it in the wrong location. It needs to go below. And then it goes back. There we go. Okay, again, I, I made a mistake. This example, the, the code here for the unwind segue needs to go, the code to unwind the segue needs to go below this, below that. And then it works. The control drag to the exit works. Right? This goes below. So this is in the view controller for this one. The IB action function, back to main menu, unwind segue, it goes below here. Below here. Yes? Is the difference between that and the control pressing up the button and the button pressing You mean the exit button up the top? Yeah. What's the difference between doing the code and control pressing up a button and dragging that to the end? Oh, the back button? Yeah. Oh, that's right. That would work. You're right. You can control click and drag the back button. Um, I don't know. I think it has to do with memory, right? Because if if you go from one screen to the other and then back, I think it keeps it in memory. Where the unwind segue removes it from memory, I think you're going to have a memory problem of going back, back, back because it keeps it in memory. I think the unwind segue is important to like kind of remove it from memory. But that's the problem. I think I ran into when I was doing that one screen. You go one, 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 keep going from screen to screen, do in the back like that, and then it keeps adding more to memory instead of removing it from memory. I think that's the issue. Okay, let's try it. Let's see if it works. How about that? Let's try it. Let me save. Try it. Maybe I'm zoomed in too far. I see a map. There's a legal option here. Yeah. I, I think it might be like meters or something, because it said it's a 50. It's 80. Oh, I might be too close. Did anybody get the map to show up? I did, but it's, it's really zoomed out. Okay. It's basically showing all of California. <laughs> So hold on. I'm gonna go back to five thousand, uh, or you're thinking fifty thousand. Okay, let me try that. Uh, 
Oh, there we go. Then I, I, you should be able to zoom, or not zoom. Well, if you were on your thing, you should be able to pitch and zoom. That's why the animate is true, right? The animate is true. You should be able to pinch and zoom. I don't know if you could do that on the simulator here, but the back button should go back. So you should have at least two screens going. I'll pause and come in. Okay, let's do a web link to our park. Um, I'm going to do the same thing we did with the other one. So again, back in the... Back in the main window here, I'm going to make another view controller. Another view controller. And then, again, we can duplicate the top part again, if you remember how to duplicate the top part. Again, I'm going to take this stack, which is the top part. And I'm going to duplicate it by holding the control key down and dragging down here. Oh, let me open this up first, though. Let me open this up. I'm going to drag it down here, holding the option key. I'm sorry, the option key. Click and drag there. Duplicates it. I'm going to put it towards the top like I did last time. And then I'm going to use the built-in constraints. There we go. Built-in constraints. Maybe get a different background color. If you remember, we can give it a background color by going to attributes. If I can get to my attributes. How do we close this window? Um, there we go. I want to get to my attributes and let's give it a background color. How about that? Red. So again, um, we have a background color background color for that. Uh, this has some attributes already. Um, if you look at the web link, it's very similar to the map. Um, now, we did that before, right? And so some of these things we don't necessarily have to do. Um, when did we do the web example in class, right? We did that already once. But let's try it again. Again, um, I'm going to go down here and type in uh, web, 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 um, web, <laughs> web view, web kit view, display embedded web content enables content navigation. This is the one we want to use, not the deprecated one. Let's add that in and then add some constraints to that. There we go. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make it a programming. I'm going to make its own Coco Touch for this one. Again, a Coco Touch for this. To make a Coco Touch for that, I'm going to go and add a Coco Touch for this. To make a Coco Touch for this, we go underneath File, New, File. And again, same thing. Again, a Coco Touch for that. And then this one's going to be my web view controller. Again, it's a UI view controller. And I'm going to put it in the same window. And again, we're going to if you look at the handout, you'll notice you have to import the the uh, import the import the web kit. Web kit. And then um, we need to make an outlet. So the next thing is to go back. So after you Actually, I'm going to close this window. Let me see here. Why am I stuck in this window here? Let's go back to the uh, main storyboard. We need to make sure that new Swift file that we just made, that, uh, where did it go? Map view controller is connected to this window. So if you remember to connect it to the window, make sure this is blue and go up here to where this, this uh, what was this again? Inspector, I think it was called, right? Attribute inspector right here. Make sure under class we choose that new one we just made, map view controller, right there. Oh, geez. Thank you. What did I say? Web view controller. Web web view controller, thank you. <laughs> web view controllers there. And then of course let's hit our Olympics. And then uh we're going to again make sure you import the the web kit here. And then uh, in this 
in the programming, you'll see that it makes a constant called web URL. URL with a string to the location. Let the request URL be URL with an exclamation point. And then load it into the view kit. So again, the first thing we need to do is make an outlet. So uh, I'm going to select it right here. Hold on the control key. Click up here at the top. Oh, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Where am I going here? Oh, underneath here. In here. There we go. And then uh, let's call it um, web view. Web view. Web view is a web kit. It's an outlet right there. So you got your web kit there. And then down below inside of here, we're going to have the uh, programming for the address. And this is probably old, well, which is a string. And then um, we're going to have an um, address. So again, you can go and copy the address. Uh, be wary of copying addresses, though, online. A lot of times they have database stuff stuck in. Ooh! Oh, went to Google. And I almost got, uh, what are we doing, Joshua Tree? Oh, look at that. I, whoosh. Oh, block. I should have said block. I'm going to have to quit. Let's start over. So I'm going to copy my address in there. It doesn't know what web URL is yet, I guess. Yeah. It's all right. We're going to add it right here. So let URL request equal URL requests and then URL web URL with the exclamation point that should get rid of the error message no now it doesn't know what <laughs> So next, we'll, we'll tell it what the URL request is called. So the web view dot load URL request. So it seemed pretty simple. And this is the URL lowercase. We got we're using this word right here. So again, you, then you would have to do the navigation. How do I do the navigation? Again, I would then, let me make this bigger. Again, this web button goes to here, show. And then the same back button, you should be able to reuse that again to go back each time to the thing. And so if we test it now, if we test it now, You should be able to see a map and go back and then a web link and then go back. Uh oh, there's a there's a alert closure and cancellation due to rain and snow. Whoosh. Whoosh. Can you imagine rain and snow in the desert? Okay, so I just followed the code that was 
that was in the handout there, and it, and I got it to go. And you should you should know how to do the navigation back. Use the same back button. It should go back to the same location. So try and get to that point. I'll come around and help you, and um, we can do the, the the next parts next week. What do you want me to put on the screen? The, the map or the web?